Today I want to talk to you about why I think a jazz bass, also known as a J bass, is really good for worship. Now I'm putting together this video in case uh, you're newer to uh, playing worship music, maybe you're newer to playing bass, you're not quite sure what kind of bass you should get. There's plenty of great basses out there, so what I'm saying is by no means the gospel uh, when it comes to bass. This is just my personal opinion, so feel free to buy something else if you're in the market for something else. But if you are shopping around for a bass for your worship team, uh, I do recommend a jazz bass. And the reasons for it are a number of reasons, actually. Uh, the first is being that it's a pretty universal bass. It's been around for a long time, 60 years or something like that. Uh, and so it's, it's a, a bass that's really pretty established. Everybody uses it, has a sound um, that you can use for really any kind of music. Um, and not that, I mean, it's a bass guitar, so I mean, you play it and it goes boom, 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 boom. <laughs> but um, it's got a, a sound, you can pretty much tailor it to however you want, especially if you're using an amp or some type of preamp system, pedal system with it. Um, you can pretty much get a good tone. Now, I also play a, a Music Man basis, I play Stingrays, and I play that a lot on our worship team. And actually, the first couple of years I was on the worship team, that's primarily all I used was Music Man Stingray because it has such a big, nice, full sound. Works really good for contemporary worship music. That's a great bass, too, um, to consider. But uh, lately, I've been playing mostly the jazz bass, kind of getting reacquainted with uh, this bass I've had for a long time and, and just really enjoying it. I'm actually finding that um, it just seems to, even though it's not as full as my Music Man bass because of the pickups mostly, um, but I can really, I just, I don't know, I just connect really good with the, the instrument and it, it, I'm able to play it a little bit better than the other bass, um, in my opinion. But um, it just, it's just, it's a sound though, even though it's not as big and full, um, you, it's still I can get it to work for really any kind of song that we're doing. I can get more aggressive with it, um, of a sound with it than I can with the Music Man. I can still get pretty a pretty good full sound by just using the, uh, the front pickup here next to the neck. Uh, rolling off all of the uh, highs because um, this is a this is a passive bass and you can that's an actually another reason why jazz basses are so cool is because you can really get configured however you want. The most common jazz bass is the Fender Jazz which has been around for years but there's literally it seems like there's hundreds of companies that make uh, jazz bass knockoffs. Uh, and actually a lot of those knockoffs are highly custom, really high-end basses. So just because it's not an actual Fender bass doesn't mean that's not a good bass. Actually, in my opinion, there's a lot of uh, jazz basses that are not by Fender that I think are a lot better than Fender's bass. Um, this is a Fender uh, jazz, um, but if I had lots of money, I'd probably be buying something like a Sadowski or something like that, some type of really high-end Fender jazz or high-end jazz bass. When it's not a Fender, it's typically referred to as a J bass because Fender owns the name jazz bass. Why they call it jazz bass? I think it's because of a marketing ploy back in, you know, the late 50s, early 60s. They were probably wanting to target that new emerging market or whatever. I don't know. So they called it a jazz bass, thinking that they were just appealing to a certain uh, type of musician. Uh, of course, it was before rock and roll it was really big and Anyway, so now everybody started playing a jazz bass, and now the name jazz bass, even though you don't have to play jazz bass on a jazz bass, the name just kind of just kind of stuck. Oh, and that does remind me, what kind of technique do you use when playing a jazz bass? <laughs> you use jazz hands. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist that one. Okay, so um, what I was saying earlier was. Okay, so J bass is, is by anybody who doesn't, is not a Fender, or is not Fender, actual official jazz bass, they usually refer to it as a J bass. So anyway, the, I was saying that you can get it configured however you want. Um, this happens to be just a standard American model. Um, it's got, it's passive, there's no active electronics in it. Um, and so you can get, what's really cool is you can get um, replacement for the uh, uh, for the control panel here, you can actually pop this out and actually buy third market, uh, third party uh, add-ons where it's just they've got a preamp and everything all built in, and you just pop it in, and boom! Now all of a sudden you got a, a, a an active bass. Um, you can change out the pickups, you can change out the pre, you can everything on this bass. You can change out and customize. That's what's so cool about Fender. It's like there's third party 
stuff for everything that, that uh, you see on this base. You can swap out the neck, you can swap out the body. Um, it's just completely configurable however you want this base to be. Um, you could buy a really cheap jazz base. Like, for example, Fender has a, a low end, lower end uh, line of instruments under the name Squire. You can get a Squire jazz base for a lot less than uh, their Fender brand. And then over time, you can, you can change out parts. You can change out, replace the pickups. You can replace the neck. You can completely now have a custom base over a period of time by just swapping out parts. And there's literally, again, there's hundreds of different uh, options out there to, to customize this particular base. Whereas if you're buying another base, a lot of times you're just, that base is pretty much it. There's not a whole lot you can do with it. Maybe you can switch out the pickups or whatever, but um, there's not much more you can do with it than that. Um, like I was saying, you can get the lower cost uh, jazz bases um, like Squire uh, for a few hundred bucks. Um, or you can spend thousands and thousands and buy really high-end jazz basses too, like something by from Sadowski or, or uh, some of those other premium builders. Um, also, one worth mentioning is uh, there's a brand out now called uh, Sire that's making some really nice uh, J basses, jazz basses, um, for less than Fender um, and around the, near the price range of Squires, and they've got some really nice basses, um, definitely to check out. So you can get very affordably get a get a good bass. Um, the basses are also the jazz basses. Traditionally, for years and years, they were four string basses. Um, then around, I guess, the 90s, they started building five-string basses. When I say they, I mean Fender. Um, this, this particular one is a, is a five-string bass. Now, Fender doesn't make a six-string, but there are some people, some custom builders out there that'll do six-string jazz basses. And uh, so there's a lot of variety and, and, you know, however many strings that you want. You can definitely get a four- or a five-string jazz bass without a problem. Also, they're very comfortable playing sitting down. Um, the body is just really comfortable. Um, the way it sits against you, it's comfortable sitting down. Also, if I were to stand up, it's really comfortable standing up too. It's kind of got what the, you call this offset body where it's kind of sloped a little this way. I don't know why, but somehow that seemed, that kind of transfers the weight a little bit better. Um, it's really comfortable um, playing, holding this bass on a strap, hanging around my neck. I don't know how the weight compares to my Stingray basses, but um, I would say they're pretty similar, but this one just I can seems like I can I can wear this one standing up for a lot longer um, without as much fatigue, and it's a lot more comfortable playing sitting down as well. So uh, those are kind of the main reasons. Um, you'll see this particular jazz bass, not this particular bass, but <laughs> jazz basses in general. Uh, if you look at any anybody who's playing worship music of any kind, whether it's contemporary worship or uh, Southern Gospel or Black Gospel or whatever you, whatever style of, of worship you're into, um, you'll see a lot of these basses being used, a lot of J basses, a lot of jazz basses. So it's definitely something to consider if you are looking for a bass to purchase for your, your jazz or for your, your worship team or to, to use on your worship team. So definitely consider it. Of course, there's plenty of good options out there, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, if I were a millionaire, I'd have 50 bases, but um, I don't because I'm not a millionaire. Um, but this base does a great job, and I'm happy with it. Probably over time, I'll do some customizations to this. I will uh, want to get some, some front work done on the neck. I want to possibly put in an a active uh, system in it, a preamp, um, swap that out. Um, maybe at some point put in some new pickups. But overall, it's a great base. And uh, anyway, that's my two cents on it. Take it for what it's worth. Thanks for watching. God bless you.